In this video, we will be looking at the biochemistry of nucleic acid primary structure, starting with the bases, the sugars, the nucleosides, and the nucleotides. Let's start with the bases. If you remember from the previous video, we have two types of bases. We have purines, which will represent with an R, and pyrimidines, which will represent with a Y. Let's first look at purines. Purines consist of a nine-membered, two-ring system, whereas pyrimidines consist of a six-membered, single ring. The purines that we've talked about are adenine and guanine. And the pyrimidines that we've talked about are cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Remember that uracil is only present in RNA, whereas thymine is only present in DNA. Now let's talk about the sugar. The sugar at the base of a nucleic acid is a ribosugar. In most cases, this ribosugar is modified or unmodified at the two prime carbon. In DNA, this two prime carbon is dehydroxylated, and thus DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. So instead of having a hydroxyl group, it has a hydrogen at this two prime carbon. However, RNA is not dehydroxylated at the two prime carbon, and thus the X here would represent a hydroxyl group. The one prime carbon of a ribosugar may also be modified by the addition of a base. The one prime carbon will form a bond with the ninth nitrogen of a purine ring or the first position nitrogen of a pyrimidine ring. The three prime hydroxyl group is important because this hydroxyl group is always needed to initiate replication, and thus replication proceeds in the five prime to the three prime direction. And finally, there's the five prime carbon. The five prime carbon is important because this carbon is phosphorylated in many molecules that are important to biological systems, including in the monomers that make up DNA and RNA. Let's now look at this structure. This structure is called a nucleoside. A nucleoside contains a ribosugar, deoxy or regular, with a base attached to the one prime carbon. Although with a single base, we might call them adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, or uracil, in a nucleoside, we would call them adenosine, guanosine, cytidine, thymidine, or uridine. The last thing that we'll look at when talking about nucleic acid primary structure is a nucleotide. A nucleotide is a nucleoside with a phosphorylated 5' prime carbon. That means that on the 5' prime sugar of a nucleoside, there is a dehydration synthesis reaction in which a phosphate group is added onto this carbon with the loss of a water. The 5' prime phosphate group can also react further in a cyclization reaction, such as in cyclic adenosine monophosphate, in which a single phosphate cyclizes with the 3' prime hydroxyl group to make a cyclic shape. Cyclic AMP is an important regulatory and signaling molecule in the cell. In addition to this, further phosphorylations can happen from this primary phosphate. You can add up to three phosphates with very high energy phosphoanhydride bonds. Phosphates added can be categorized as gamma, beta, and alpha positions. The bond between gamma and beta is higher than the energy of the bond between beta and alpha. Therefore, hydrolyzing this bond releases more energy than hydrolyzing this bond. And thus, nucleotides such as adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and guanosine triphosphate, GTP, are considered very high energy molecules, and in fact, the energy currency of the cell, because the high amount of energy stored in the phosphoanhydride bonds, particularly due to the high energy in the bond between the gamma and beta phosphate groups. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.